Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. Now, what have you done? You know, when you came out of uh, your education phase, it seems like you were uniquely uh, uh, set up to have like the stability in your personal life and to do a lot of the right things in your personal life. Is that true? Did that turn out to be true or not? No, I, th- I think that's, I think that's, have you, I think that's have accurate. You been married to the same woman or you divorced 15 times or, you know, I, I'm divorced once. I'm divorced okay. once. Yeah. Uh, the w- I think everybody's allowed uh, uh, one or two. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think I think I have some stability, and I think I have I have a I have a meditation practice that's been there for 25 years. Um, but I don't I don't know that that came from the study. I, I think that's yeah. something I got from my parents more than anything. Is is yeah. just you know South Dakota Midwestern work hard, do your best. Where in South honest. Dakota? What's that? Where in South Dakota? Rapid City, South Dakota. Born in Rapid Rapid City. Yeah, yeah you know it. Up in Spearfish. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. My I've grandfather there, was a minister in Spearfish. Is that right? I've yep. been, uh, we'd go up there and, uh, well, he's a big hunter. But Got Pheasants, right? Pheasants? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, pheasants. I've, yeah, I have been pheasant hunting there in South Dakota. But we would go up primarily and do uh, prairie dog hunting. Oh, that's not hunting. Rifles. That's not hunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's shooting. That's shooting, yeah. That's, that's shooting. shooting. <laughs> Getting rid of those varmints. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, great country. And uh, uh, you grew up where you do. Did you grow up there wanting to get out or not wanting to get out? I, I mean, I love I loved it there. It's not that I wanted to get out. I mean, I. So a lot of I people didn't... move there now, you know. You know. Say again. A lot of people move there now. You know, they, that's what oh, they want. Tr- you know, but... drives my parents yeah. crazy. The people coming in from all over the place. I. I never wanted to leave. I, yeah. I, never, I didn't leave because I didn't like where I was. I left because I wanted to go to school. I went to school in Montana. I love Montana for skiing. I, you know, I skied four right. or five days a week when I was in Montana. And then when I left Montana, I came to the Bay Area, Berkeley, specifically to study Buddhist studies. Or I came to study, to be a Lutheran seminarian, but I ended up studying Buddhist studies here. Uh-huh. So I, I always moved because there was something that I was moving towards. I didn't, I didn't yeah. move away from things. I love South Dakota. I love Montana. I try to get my wife to... Um, to buy a buy a mountain home in Montana, she says it's too cold. I'm still working on her. We'll see where that see where that ends up. Yeah. So, uh, what are you most excited about in the future? You know, what what gets you super excited? Yeah, uh, I'd love it. So, my um, uh, mindful money is designed to help people out that don't have access, and that 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 is now the the sole focus of the company. Um, we are we're a for profit company, but all profits get put into scholarships and things like that. Um, so Mindful Money has courses, we have coaching, we have workshops that'll teach and help people do it themselves until they until their complexity justifies advice. The, the, the thing that the advisor world tries to convince everyone of is that everyone needs an advisor, and that's just not true. Most people's situations are very simple, can be handled with very simple things, and people can do it themselves. We don't need to make this smoke and mirrors. We don't need to make this more difficult than it is. People can do it themselves. And, and I try to create a system that helps people do it themselves. And I'm super excited about how Mindful Money is, is coming about doing that. We're actually just creating the, the beginning to end. You know, how We meet somebody here. We introduce them to the to a, to a webinar that helps them out here. We introduce them to a workshop here. Here's the coaching after the fact. So we're, we're sort of creating an end-to-end support for anybody. Just starting out, 23 years old, you know, less than half a million dollars, ten thousand dollars, whatever it is, you're in debt. We can help people get through in these these some of these issues. And the big thing that you would uh, going to have to uh, deal with is getting the word out. People know that this is an option. Have you gotten into any thinking about how to do that to get in front of these people earlier in their career? Because the, the idea is the earlier you can get the, get their attention and get them on that track, the better. You're not having to pull them out of the ditch where you, you know, they wind up at at thirty. You know, after yep, wife, kids, debts, this, that, and the other, and it's like everything is 
you know, they're, they're, they're fighting for survival. Uh, and so, uh, any, any ideas on how to get in front of those people? One, one thing that I, uh, try and provide on the podcast is a forum where people could find out about things that are out there that might do them some good. And is uh, you know, I do know of a lot of young people that listen to the podcast, but, uh, you know, where, when, when's a better time than while you're on the way up where you're getting your, your values and your mindset and you're learning about how the world works uh, to find out how the successful people think, you know, and get yourself following some of those patterns. And so have you thought about how to uh, maximize your outreach in that world? Cause it, you know, it'd be wonderful if these kind of things were in, in high schools all over the country, you know, colleges yep. all over the country, you know, and, and they, you know, God bless them teaching their sexuality that, you know, that uh, wokeness and how it affects like one tenth of 1% of the population or whatever it is. It's not the majority, but the majority issues are just getting clouded by, by these, these side issues. And like, nobody's taught about how to manage money. I mean, sure you know, you can, you can be one of the things that amazed me, and I'm sure you've been the same thing. You get CPA partners sometimes and you go in there and talk about their personal financial situation and it's like no idea yep you know and they'll own things like whole life which is the biggest ripoff of all time and like that's not good i thought was savings like yeah one per half of a percent if you keep it over whatever and then by the way they keep the savings if you die and you know and so (laughs) you know it's just oh that's not a good thing and so the thing is, people, they go through their entire life being around it. It's like water, water, not a drop to drink if you're out on a uh, raft in the Pacific Ocean. You know, salt water everywhere, but no fresh water to drink. People are around this stuff, but they never get the no basics no in there. But it wouldn't it be great if this was in all the schools and in at least a dribble, you know, if you got a hour you know, during the course of their high school education, an hour, somebody came in and spoke, yep. uh, you know, in a, a, a assembly or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, we, we do, this is, I mean, this, that's right up the alley. Like we have, there's a, there's a couple of things that we're doing and that's, you're, you're referencing something I want to do. So we're, we have social media presence, right? That's, you know, there young people are on social media. That that's one of the places we are. Um, uh, I also work with employers. Uh, so I, I, you know, large employers that we'll do like a, a, right. a, a not, it's not a lunch and learn. Cause it's not, you know, it's, it's virtual. So you can have 3000 people listening to an educational piece. And then you got 23 year old people that are just starting off in a, in a company. We, we teach them how to do some basic stuff. Um, but the thing you're referencing, the idea of getting into schools, we do have digital programs and we have been in a number of schools and, and there's been, um, uh, special Olympic, you know, groups of special Olympics athletes have gone through the program. There's been, you know, groups of, uh, black entrepreneurs, uh, in East Oakland have gone through the program. There's been faculty and staff at, at, um, at, uh, small schools, uh, primary schools, uh, middle schools, high schools have gone through the program. Uh, students in high schools have gone through the program. Um, so there's, there's lots of different small groups, but that's, that's one off. That's, I don't have like, I can't go to the national board of schools and say, Hey, distribute this everywhere. Cause there's just, there's too much crap. How are they going to pick me over somebody else? It's got it. We got to right. have got to have a tribunal to figure out the right one, and it's got to go yeah. to this person. You have to have congressional approval and all that. So I just, if a school wants it, I give it to them. Like there's a there's a price on it, but I'm giving it to schools for free. Like I don't even anyone that wants it can have it. You got a group of people, I give it away. A- anyone that's list, anyone listening that has a group of people could be a church, could be a school, could be an athletics organization. I don't care. It, email me. I'll give it to you for free. And the thing is, uh, one thing would be great. A good first step is get in on Khan Academy. Yeah, it's it's on it's not on Khan Academy. Khan Academy has its own stuff. All good yeah. stuff, by the way. Yeah, it, it's available in the same in the same kind of structure, though. It's it's a digital okay. course that anyone can sign up for. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, it's just a matter of thinking about it, and uh, you know, even even uh, guys coming out of prison, you know, yep. when they're in the prisons to get, you know, there's not, you know, it's there's a not enough done for the people coming out of yep. the jails and everything. And it's a very traumatic time. And that, you know, when you can put good thinking in their head to getting them thinking seriously about their future, they're more likely to stay on a 
track. I've got, I know, uh, fortune, I know of a young person who was caught up in that system kind of just basically because he was just it, an idiot. And, uh, uh, kept doing wrong things, nothing really serious, no real crime, was just being stupid. But he got caught up in that system and got out, and then he had to do the labor job. And I would tell him, look, just put up with it because you're climbing the ladder out of the thing. And But he did it. Now he's making a, working with Google as an engineer, making 150 grand a year. And it hadn't been that many years. You know, was, and, you know go ahead. In 1997, when I just started my first, the first thing I did, the first thing I ever taught um, in terms of personal finance was uh, a class at a halfway house in San, in South San Francisco. Specifically, really? that's where I learned what a term, what the shot, what the term shot caller is. Yeah, yeah, shot caller. Yeah, I didn't know what that was, and then I yeah. I had a shot caller in my course, which terrified me. Like he had, he had pointed out multiple people to die in prison. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there was a bunch of people there that were in this halfway house and I was teaching them about, you know, checking account and, and balancing your checking account and just some basic, some really basic stuff. And, and as you said, work up the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. Job, job opportunities suck for you. I get that. Just start where you are and grow from there. You, you'll get out of it. It's a pro it's, you're not done. Like you grow, you get better. Let's just it's get better. You know, I did a podcast with a shot caller called Casey. I forget his last name right now, but he wrote the book, The Shot Caller. Oh, no kidding. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, at 13 years old, he was a shot caller. Oh, wow. He was that bad. Yep. That's Everybody bad liked At 13. Yep. Yeah. And he was, I think, 13 or 14, he was also in solitary confinement <laughs> up around your area for the rest of his life. And it's a miraculous story how he came out of it. But people can come out, but you have to have correct information. And yep. you have to have people that care. And I know that you do. Uh, and so I'm going to wish you the best on that. Anything that you want to pass on to people that are coming up the ladder and uh, any kind of encouragement or or fill in the cracks of what we've covered today that something might be useful for them? I, I think that the two pieces of information that I always like to make sure we share is, is, you know, don't believe everything you hear, you know, test the waters, don't believe everything you hear, you know, stay mindful of what the truth might be. Um, and then just realize you're not done. And we kind of covered it a second ago, but be willing to become better. You're yeah. all becoming, look at the next step, take the next step. Yeah, just because you're not good enough today doesn't mean you can't be good enough tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. That's and, right. And uh, you might be you might be one piece of information away from being good enough. You know, <laughs> Zig Ziglar, I think. Yeah, you might not be that far away, and so uh, keep on moving. Thanks so much. Enjoy enjoyed it, and uh, uh, best of luck. The next big thing that you want to accomplish, other than the. Uh, uh, program what would you say in your life for you personally wow i have two kids that are again that are going off to college so getting them into college would be the best thing <laughs> wow fantastic yep. and uh the life you're gonna have after they go that the house is they're still in the house well yeah they're both still here one of them leaves next year the next one leaves two years you're after. probably that stage where you can't imagine the house being empty nope yeah well, let me just tell you that let me tell you this it's like, I can't imagine what it'll be like where they're going. In a short period of time, it's like, I can't imagine them coming back. You know, <laughs> the house is going to be so full. I hope they don't stay long, you know? <laughs> no, it's, I don't feel that at all. I love it's, ama it's amazing how quick your, your mind can adjust to the different things. It's like, so quiet in here. <laughs> but what are you going to do with your life now? Are they, I mean, for you, for you. For Think me, about I... I, 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 I'm pursuing the goal that my brother and I had together. I yeah. still have that dream and I'm still yeah. pursuing that dream. Yeah. Fantastic. And I wish you the best and let's stay in touch and uh, maybe do this again down the road. Thanks so much. Good. Thanks Larry. Bye. Thanks for listening to the million dollar mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whitealamwinning.com. Thanks for listening.